LDBC, this is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, guys. Um, you know, Chris Cyborg is keeping her foot on the UFC neck. And Chris Cyborg is saying, look, <laughs> I don't know what the status of Jermaine Durand May is. Chris Cyborg, join the club. Nobody knows, okay? She said, it doesn't look like that Jermaine, we're going to fight at UFC 214, but give me Megan Anderson ass. <laughs> Cyborg wants Megan Anderson, but, you know, Megan... I think they listen to my videos because I told them, look, this is not admitting that you're afraid of Cyborg, Megan. If Megan says, no, I don't want to fight her right now, and that's what she should say, no, because she don't have the skill set to deal with Cyborg. Now, she got the chin, and maybe her chin can take her three rounds, maybe, but she don't have the skill set. And you got to have skill set to go to distance with a Chris Cyborg. You have to, okay? And you got to have skill set to defeat a Chris Cyborg. It's just no... There's no way around it. You're not going to be successful against Cyborg if your skill sets are, 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 not, are not good. Your chin can be great, but then that just means Cyborg going to be punching the, the hell out of you for the whole fight. And then what? No, and Megan Anderson is smart. But now, in my opinion, Megan Anderson need to shut the hell up, okay? Megan Anderson need to shut the hell up and, and start training and stop running your mouth saying you want this and you want that. You'll beat this person because, listen, you ain't doing nothing at 145 pounds. You're going to have to see Cyborg. That's just how it is. You're going to have to see Cyborg. You ain't making no moves at 145 until you, you see Cyborg. And now, on another note, I think the UFC, they've got to get ladies in that 145-pound division. They've got to get a roster. So, at least when Megan Anderson, you know, she makes her, you know, uh, entry into the UFC... She's got some 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 lower tier opponents that she can build her resume on and gain experience. They, they've got to have some fighters like that because if they don't, then this woman, she's going to get thrown to the wolves and she's going to catch an ass whooping. Folks, that's just how it is, okay? Um, but I like Megan Anderson. Now, when they come to Jermaine Durandamay, don't nobody know where the hell she is. I mean, Cyborg, your guess is good as ours. She ain't talking to nobody. She's not putting stuff on the media. And you know what? It's kind of crazy because I... Um, you know, I had set up an interview with her and everything, you know, and it's just like I got tired of playing, you know, message tag. I got tired of playing tag. And it's like, okay, you said this time and it's this time and this time didn't happen. You know, and after a while, I'm a patient dude. I'm real patient. But after a while, I just said, man, forget it. <laughs> That's what I said. I said, forget it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, interviewing people, it's just something, you know, I like to interview them. But then I just said, man, no. I ain't finna, you know, sit here and play, you know, tag for two weeks. That's just, no, it's not productive and I'm a busy guy. I ain't got time to do that, you know? I just don't have time to do it. So, you know, it, I started looking at, you know, okay, well, dang, if, if this how she is, is this her character? You know, is, is, is this really, you know, instead of just saying, well, no, I don't have time right now. And I could have took that and I just waited at a later date. Nah, man. And it's not just Jermaine. Some of these fighters, they like that. Good Lord, man. And I ain't going to say like a whole bunch of names, but no. And I haven't thought, man. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stop these interviews. I ain't going to do no more. And just start reporting on content. It, it's, you know, it, and there's some good fighters that I've interviewed that, I, man, I've had so much fun. But I've just been thinking about it, man. Just, uh, I don't know. But, you know, it's just a thought. But anyway, um, so let's really talk about this whole Chris Cyborg and Jermaine Durandamay thing. Okay, so... Being a fan of Jermaine Durand me is is really tough right now. You know, and I'm a fan and I'm a diehard fan and I I support her. It's hard to support her at this time because what's happening is she's she's not communicating or saying anything to the fans. And you know, I know she feels like that a lot of her diehard fans, you know, they have turned their back on her. Which, some of you guys from the Netherlands, y'all need to be a damn shame to y'all self. Like, God, dog. And I'm sitting there thinking, are you serious? Are you guys really like that? Like, I'm not even from the Netherlands. I don't, I'm not, but I support Jermaine. I support her, you know. And I like the fighter that she is. You guys, y'all just all the way turned y'all back on it. And it's like, damn, okay. So, y'all got mad over this. And it's just like this, this whole subscription thing, you know. I laugh at dudes. Hey, man, I can't tell them like what you said. That's that's it. I'm subscribing. Like I'm supposed to be like, oh well, oh okay, well, oh, mm, yeah, well, okay, well, damn, bye, see you. <laughs> like what? Cause I always I always tell people when you unsubscribe, five more people subscribe. So you might have been like the 
the evil uh, disease that was on my channel. <laughs> so, okay, great. But, you know, and I know Jermaine may not look at it like that. And some of the comments that people was leaving on her social media, her Facebook and, you know, her Twitter. I mean, man, that it was, it was getting out of hand. It was getting out of hand. Okay. It was getting very, very out of hand. And Jermaine read that stuff. She checked that, man. And it's like, damn, you know. So what the hell is the girl supposed to do, man? You know, she pissed off. Fans done turned her back on her. So, you know, I started trying to understand. Okay. But, you know, now it's been, it's been since February. Here it is April now. And I think that, you know, at least give your real fans who are there still supporting you and saying, hey, you know what, Jermaine, it's okay. You know, those fans, us, you know, maybe give us a small status like, hey, I'm okay. Hey, you know, surgery went well. Or, hey, we're just going to do rehab on the hand. Anything. Anything. Because I think the real true fans of Jermaine Duran and May, we would have understood, okay, well, you know, you don't want to do an unnecessary surgery. If it's not needed, if your hand specialist say no, okay, fine. You know what? They want you to rehab the hand for six months, and it'll be back to normal. Okay, good. That's something I can get with because if you're a fighter, you're going to have hand problems. Your hands are going to hurt. I mean, that's just it. Your hands are going to hurt. I, I don't even know a fighter whose hands don't hurt sometimes. They just do. But that's the whole problem with Jermaine Durandam. It's like nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, do the UFC know? Probably. Why are they keeping it a secret? If this, if the UFC really knows what's going on, why are they keeping it a secret? You know, why are they not telling everybody, you know? Why? You know, because we, we want to know. But anyway, yeah. So Cyborg just said, okay, well, hell, if I can't get no piece of Jermaine, get me Megan. Get me Megan. Get me Megan Anderson, you know? Okay. Uh, I, you know, that's good. <laughs> Megan, if your promoter give you that fight, I'm telling you, it's going to sound like a good deal. Yeah, I get a chance to take down Chris Cyborg, me, the first woman to, to probably take her down. Don't, buy, don't go into it. I'm telling you, don't believe that hype. Because so many of these girls, they, they get a chance, and, they, and, it, and it, you know, opportunity look good. Now, sometimes the money will probably be a little bit more money than you used to send. It might be. But see, you think, we want to think about longevity, okay? We want longevity. Okay, and the longevity really and truly is going to pay you the most money instead of this one time payday. And you don't know you can get a concussion. You can get your ass put on the wall of destruction. I mean, hell, you just don't know what will happen. See, at least if you're going to be on the wall of destruction, hell, you make it damn hard for Cyborg to put you on that damn wall. And that comes with knowledge. Okay, you got to have all the skill sets you can when you go face a Cyborg. Don't get in there with limited skill set or, you know, just a heart. No, that ain't going to work. Ask Leslie Smith what happened. Leslie Smith got hard. That's fine. But that flat-footed approach, it's not going to work with Chris Cyborg. The style that defeats Cyborg, I made a video about this. What can defeat Cyborg? The person got to be agile. The person got to have heart. They can't, they can't have any fear of Chris Cyborg. And I think Cyborg, she wins the fight before she steps in because everybody's afraid. So that person, you can't have fear. You got to have heart. You got to have good foot movement. Your foot movement got to be through the roof. Because if you flat foot a cyborg, going to decimate you. Which, Megan, you got good foot movement. Okay, second, you got to know how to fight on the inside. Your takedown defense must be on point. Okay? And you must have a decent jab. Cyborg does not like a jab in her face. She can't stand a good jab. She can't. And that disrupts her whole offense. I've seen it happen. I've seen Cyborg try to rush in on people and they pop a jab at her. That almost stops Cyborg dead in her tracks. Giving you this free advice. But this is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. I'm done. What are you waiting on? Subscribe to the best women's MMA platform on YouTube.